What's up everybody, Peter McKinnon here. Welcome back to another video. Today we are discussing Camera Basics 3. This is the third installment of a three video series that has taken me several years to make all three videos uh, for no other better reason than uh, timing. Timing. What's funny about this is actually the first video I did in my home studio, the second video I did in my first office, and the third installment, the final one for now, is being done at my new studio. So I get a little humor out of that. Today's topics are gonna include RAW versus JPEG, cropped sensors versus full frame sensors, and mirrorless cameras versus DSLR cameras. So if you're new to photography, if you're new to video, you're trying to figure out what camera to buy, what settings to use, this is the place to be. Welcome, good to have you, and uh, this is the series. I'll link the other videos above so you can get to those easily, but let's just dive in to Camera Basics 3, starting with RAW versus JPEG. It all comes down to how much post-processing you wanna do, what you're planning to do with those photos after the fact. Are you gonna print them? Are they for advertising? Are they being blown up into pictures or posters or billboards? Are they going into magazine? Are they going online? These different questions will determine what you should be shooting. Now, bonus points if you know what JPEG actually stands for, because most people don't. Joint Photographic Expert Group. Yeah, kind of bothers me now when I say it, because I know. I'm sorry if I just ruined that for you. The mystery is gone. A couple benefits with shooting JPEG right off the bat, you can fit more on a memory card. You can fit more images on a single SD card, and they're usually faster for shooting because less data is being transferred to the card from the camera. You can actually shoot faster and longer. Now, when we're actually comparing compression and data transfers, it's actually JPEG is the worst of some of the options that you can choose. So the compression algorithm that JPEG uses disregards far too much information. So to break that down further, when you're post-processing these images, that means when you're editing them after the fact in a processing application like Photoshop or Lightroom or whatever it is that you use, processing these images after the fact is way harder due to the loss of information when that photo was captured. Now on top of that, with each time you save a photo, think of it like a photocopy. You photocopy the original, which is the best quality, the second photocopy doesn't look as good. Then you photocopy that photocopy and it looks even worse. So on and so forth as you travel down the line. The more you re-save, open, edit, process, save, open, edit, that picture becomes less and less and less and less quality. Now the benefit is they are easy files to work with, easily recognizable on most devices. Most people know what they are and that's probably why it's super popular, but we want more detail. We want more flexibility in our files when we're editing, when we're post processing. And that's why RAW is the most popular option amongst photographers and artists that are really taking their craft seriously. So unlike JPEG where all that information is being disregarded when it's saved to become an actual file, a raw picture, a raw file rather, is uncompressed. So typically you would load in your raw files into something like Adobe Lightroom where that software would process all of those raws. You would make all your edits, then you would export that as either a TIFF or a JPEG depending on the use that you had planned for that image. RAWs typically have a better dynamic range. They're far superior if you plan on doing lots of post-processing. When you shoot RAW and you open that up in a program like Lightroom to process it, you can still change those parameters without damaging the file. It's almost like you went back in time and you can still move those things around without having any image loss or data loss. So when you capture an image that might otherwise look totally blown out, when you bring that RAW photo into Lightroom, you can drag back the highlights, you can dial back the exposure, you can dehaze something, you can use all of the tools in the toolbar to recover that image to something that's usable, where when you shoot JPEG, that information is just lost forever. So before you even open that JPEG in Lightroom, you're already down a few points. You're at the disadvantage. The other team has extra players on the ice. The Canadian would make the hockey reference. That's, that's fitting, is it not? If you just got a camera and you're setting it up now, shoot raw. I mean, you can do what you want, it's your life, but. Set your camera to raw. Okay, next up we are talking about cropped sensors versus full frame sensors. Now, if you're in the market to buy a camera or you've just purchased a camera, chances are you've heard this discussion before. 
should I buy a crop sensor? Should I buy a camera with a full frame sensor? And you've noticed the full frame censored cameras are generally a lot more money. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, why? Like, what am I actually getting? What am I paying for? The term full frame sensor refers to a sensor size that has the same dimensions as a 35 millimeter format. You see, 35 millimeter format was made popular back in 1910, way back when. And that's because of the cost and the quality. So it's just kind of remained the standard moving forward. And that's how we base full frame. A cropped sensor is just, as it sounds, a cropped version of that 35 millimeter format. So where we would have a full frame, a cropped sensor is basically getting rid of the edges and cropping in on that same frame, giving you a less you know, less wide field of view. So some of these have advantages, some of these have disadvantages. Let's talk about the advantages of a full frame. First and foremost, you are going to pay more money for a full frame camera, always. It's got a wider field of view, it's got a broader dynamic range, better in low light, typically a shallower depth of field, and arguably better for certain types of photography. Now, some of the benefits of a crop sensor is you've got a major cost advantage. They are generally quite a bit cheaper. So if you are on a budget or you're looking for something to start off and you don't really wanna jump in full frame, and just drop way too much money, a crop sensor is a great cost advantage, along with a few other things that you might benefit from should you choose to go crop sensor. There is an inherent telephoto advantage, a telephoto boost, if you may, when it comes to a cropped sensor. And let me see if I can explain this as easy and straightforward as possible. Let's say you're using a full frame camera and you have a zoom lens on it, a telephoto lens, 70 millimeters to 200 millimeters. You wanna take a picture of a bear just ripping apart a salmon fish in a stream in Alaska. And you're like, oh my goodness. You're gonna zoom in to 200 millimeters with your full frame camera, bam, fire off a shot. But Joe, right here next to you has a cropped sensor and Joe zooms that same 70 to 200 lens in to snap a picture of that bear. But Joe's picture, the bear's closer up. He got closer to the bear than you did, but you're using the same lens. Joe, how did you do that? And Joe says to you, well, I'm using a cropped sensor. So no matter what lens I put on my cropped sensor, it's cropping in 1.6 times further than your lens. So my 70 to 200, this is Joe speaking, my 70 to 200 is actually like a 112 to 320 millimeter lens because it's being cropped in. Where because you are on a full frame and there is no crop, you're still shooting at a true 70 millimeter to 200 millimeter. So Joe's picture is gonna be cropped in further. So in some instances, the crop sensor can actually be a benefit. The full frame Johnny over here would have to actually buy a 300 millimeter lens in order to get that same shot or risk his life and move closer to the bear. So sometimes that crop sensor gives you a little bit of an advantage. However, when it does come down to pro level photography, almost always people are going to want the full frame because of the advantages it inherently has over the cropped sensor. So cropped versus full frame. I shoot full frame because of all the benefits. I like the wider field of view. I prefer that also for landscapes because that's primarily what I love to shoot. It's also probably better for things like architecture. I love the extra shallow depth of field. Now, hopefully that all made sense. I think with the graphics we had on screen showing you what a full frame looks like versus a crop in the same frame, it really gives you an idea of how much you're losing on the edges when you are shooting with a crop sensor. Next up and last on this video for Camera Basics 3 is DSLR versus mirrorless cameras. It's 2020, what should you be buying? Are you in the market for a camera? Did you just buy a camera or are you learning? You're doing your due diligence and trying to figure out what's what so you can make an informed decision. A DSLR camera stands for Digital Single Lens Reflex. So how does a DSLR work? Light comes through the lens, hits a mirror, goes up into a prism, and through the viewfinder so that you can get a preview of that image. When you hit the shutter, the mirror opens, the mirror flips up, the shutter opens, letting light expose onto the sensor. Your negative, your digital negative, if you will. That's what happens when you take a picture with a DSLR camera. Now, when you take a picture with a mirrorless camera, there is no mirror. There isn't even a prism. The light comes through the lens and straight up hits the sensor. Now that camera then, takes that and displays it to the back of an LCD screen so that you can see, or sends it up electronically to the viewfinder. It's not an optical viewfinder because 
it's a smaller package, it's a mirrorless camera. All right, so let's talk DSLRs for a second. One, they're heavier and they're bigger because they have that extra mirror box and prism inside. So obviously the DSLR itself is going to be larger. DSLRs were generally faster until lately where they're getting a little more competition from their mirrorless counterparts. The high-end DSLRs are still king when it comes to fast frames per second and shooting sports and those types of things. And generally they have a little bit better of a battery life because the camera isn't using an LCD CD screen to constantly preview the image or an electronic viewfinder to preview that image up in your little, your little eye hole here. You can still choose to shoot optically and not have to drain more battery using the screen constantly which also helps you sometimes outside. Now mirrorless cameras are smaller and less weight, so you can pack it into your camera. You could probably bring two mirrorless cameras for one pro size DSLR. Less weight in your camera bag, more room for other things, and your back's gonna thank you in the process. So when mirrorless cameras first came out, they were definitely not nearly as nice as DSLRs. It was a new technology, they were smaller, it was convenient, people liked them, they weren't garbage cameras by any means, but DSLRs were still regarded as just the go-to. 2020, I would say that's that's getting not if not evenly balanced to more favored towards mirrorless cameras. DSLR cameras are now being used mostly for very specific reasons when you're photographing something that needs the speed of a DSLR. Typically, some of the pro-end DSLRs will still shoot a faster frame per second, which is gonna help you out if you're a sports photographer, you're shooting in the Olympics, or you're doing something that requires that incredible frames per second. But even still now, mirrorless cameras are catching up to that speed. It's making it harder to make the decision. I would say in general, mirrorless cameras are better for video these days. There's certainly way more features packed into mirrorless cameras when it comes to film filmmaking and shooting video. Previously in the past, mirrorless cameras didn't have a big range of lenses or accessories, but now that it has become equally to not more popular than a DSLR, you're starting to see these manufacturers make and manufacture a range of lenses specifically for their mirrorless cameras, like Canon and the RF glass that they're now making, which in my opinion is nicer than the EF glass that they've been making for all these years. They've kind of shifted all that new technology into the RF glass to support the mirrorless system, which you're just gonna see become more and more and more popular. So my opinion is if you're in the market for a camera and you're looking to buy something and you say, do I get a DSLR or do I get a mirrorless camera? I personally would recommend that you get a mirrorless camera to future-proof yourself. Because I think already with the popularity that they have, they're only going to get better and they're only going to get worked on more and more and more. So what have we gone over today? We've gone over RAW versus JPEG. You wanna be shooting RAW. Crop sensor versus full frame sensor. Depending on your budget and the type of things you're shooting, either will work. My preference is a full frame. So you wanna shoot RAW photos on a full frame mirrorless camera when it comes down to a mirrorless versus DSLR. So that was a jam-packed information video. Um, there's a lot to learn in that, there's a lot to take in, but I think that is a great kind of conclusion to this Camera Basics course that we just kind of went over with these one, two, and three videos. If you haven't seen the others, again, I'll link them above or I'll link them in the description below or on the end card at the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you got something out of it, and I hope it helped you, but that, my friends, is it for me today. So hit that like button if you like this video, smash it if that's something that you're into, 2020 style. Subscribe if you like this style of content, you wanna see more and you haven't already. And, and I'll see you in the next video. Maybe we should do camera basics four, camera intermediate, advanced camera one, camera, camera not so basics four. Hmm. A full frame sensor ref <laughs> This is so difficult to make easy. The term full frame sensor refers to the dimensions. Oh, I hate reading from a notebook. The term full frame sensor The term full frame sensor refers refers to what? Why is this light so bright today? I think I should have done the whole video like this. Welcome to Camera Basics 3, not sponsored by Ford. I would say most people like the full frame sensor for the wild, <laughs> can't say it. Just say it, say it with your face.
Don't you just love it when you nail an explanation? You're like, yes, that felt right.